Welcome to part one of my new series about soft tubes modular. It's going to be a so-called in-depth series, meaning that I'm going to talk about a lot of details concerning the matter of the individual tutorials. Very detailed indeed, but for this, for the first matter, the video about how to install the soft synth, how to use the user interface, the GUI, and how it works. You need an iLock user account to activate the license and to start working with the soft synth on your computer. I didn't have one, so I went to the webpage www.ilock.com and created a free user account. The guys from Softube needed the name of my iLog account then, and after telling them, they placed all necessary licenses on my iLog account. I opened iLog License Manager on my computer, discovered the new licenses and placed them on the icon of my computer. So far the licenses. Then I went to the web pages of Softube, to the download page, and downloaded the plugins control. I wanted the 64-bit version. After running the installer on my computer and following the instructions, the plugins control application window opened and I could choose which plugins I wanted to activate. For the modular, you need to activate all plugins called modular, of course, and something, derpfer and something, and intelligible and something. As you may add more plugins to your modular later, you can open this plugins control application even without running the installer, of course you can. You find it on a Windows computer in the start menu. And with that we have reached the general user interface, the GUI at last. So let's have some looks at the user interface and its functionality now. The basic and bare user interface after launching is empty. It's an empty Euro rack with a so-called center row between the first and the second level of the rack. You can scroll up and down the rack with your mouse wheel or by clicking and holding and dragging the mouse, but, well, it's empty. Completely down at the bottom, you can uh, check for updates or subscribe to uh, Softube's newsletter uh, by clicking on the company's name. Or you can choose a smaller or larger display or open the manual as a PDF file. But let's return up to the center row. The buttons you will use most are the three colored ones. Clicking on Add, we can add a module to the rack. Holding down the Shift key lets us select more than one module at once, without having to click the Add button after selecting each single module. Clicking on the small cross in the upper right corner of the module's window closes the window after such a multiple selection. We can place up to 100 modules in the virtual Eurorack. We might, and indeed we will, want to change the order of the modules sometimes. By clicking the button Move Delete, we can do so. Click the button, then click on the module you want to move and then click somewhere in an empty space of the Eurorack where you want the module to move to. To leave the Move Delete mode, just click the Move Delete button again. When we are in Move Delete mode, we can delete, of course, a module by clicking on the red mark in the upper right corner of the module. There are some so-called performance modules, sliders and switches and knobs, which can be linked to the controls of the other modules. I insert a slider module. I activate the edit button 
and link one of the sliders to the tune knob of the VCO module, the other slider to emphasis resonance uh, to the emphasis resonance knob of the filter module. More details about the performance modules will be given in a later video in this series. Next to uh, the three colored buttons in the center row, there are the main output jacks and the main output volume control. As the modular is basically a mono synth, even if up to four voices polyphony is possible, the left output jack is normal to the right. If you connect only the left jack, you will hear a mono sound, but both channels are active. If you connect only the right jack, you hear only the right stereo channel delivering some sound. At least there is the main output level display and there are eight single audio output jacks to send separate outputs to your DAW. The four buttons completely to the right are important only when you want soft tubes modular to communicate with a hardware Eurorack system. You better leave them on, as they are by default, to block DC offset. More about that in a very later video. There is also an FX, an effects version of module, which of course has additionally input jacks for the audio input coming from your DAW's effects chain. All right, let's do some pitching. I've added some basic modules to my rack. A MIDI to CFAO module for the communication between my MIDI keyboard, or the score I may write in my DAW, and the soft synth, an oscillator, a filter, an amplifier, and an ADSR envelope generator. To patch a cable, I click at an output and at once all possible inputs are highlighted in green. I can connect one output to multiple inputs, but I can connect an input only to one output. To disconnect a cable, I simply go to the input and drag the cable away to where no input jack is and let it go. I can also start patching at an input by clicking on it and at once all possible outputs where the signal can come from are highlighted in red. And here it is, our first simple patch. the uh, ALT, the ALT key of the computer keyboard and click on a knob, it jumps back to the last adjusted value and pressing and holding the control key I can make some fine adjustments. A last note for today. Softtube's modular doesn't have a preset management of its own, so you have to use the preset manager of your door therefore. Just a short demonstration today, as I'm going to talk about the file management in the next video. Thank you for watching. The next part of this series about Softube's modular is going to deal with some aspects of the file management and is going to talk about some details of the modules we have used in the basic patch in this video. There is a website of mine at www.rofilm-medianet 
where you will find more information about this series of tutorials and about the modular. And there is also a forum there, the Deep Sound Divers Coffee House, where you can discuss my videos and their matters. Please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. And if you really like this video, please think about donating a little to help me making more videos like this one. Have a great day and a good time, Rolf.